Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of my Football Manager series. This is episode number 51 and today we are returning with the special in-depth look at the save where in today's episode you'll take a look under the hood of the save if you will and see the things you normally wouldn't see in a regular episode. What goes on behind the scenes at Carrow Road, what's going on around the world and also we're going to start off with something very interesting indeed. Let's get to that first. Because, as we discussed it in the last episode, I thought for sure Norwich were going to offer me a new contract at some point with my deal expiring at the end of this month, and they have done. They're offering me a four-year contract on £78,000 a week. And I just don't know what to do, man. I really don't. Now, as you can see, the club culture is right here. Play possession football, develop players using the club's youth system. Well, recruit some good kids then. Uh, sign high reputation players, play defensively solid football, make the most of set pieces, uh, play high tempo pressing, play entertaining football, definitely do that. And uh, don't sign players over the age of 30. And you can see our five-year plan as well. Uh, next season is to finish in the top path, reach the quarterfinal of the Europa League. But again, as you can see, it's just, it's just working towards qualifying for the Europa League and then five years down the line making sure we do start qualifying for it on a consistent basis. As I said before the biggest luxury with Norwich City is that we've got so much time to turn this club into a European club. Like their, their ambitions are quite, well I'd say realistic really considering but um, I, I just don't know what to do really. I don't know what to do. Now my reputation has grown, what's that, a third of a star? A quarter of a star? I'm not too sure there, but it's about three and a, three and a bit stars now. Um, just under half, I'd say. Let's say let's say three and a quarter. Let, actually, let's go say three and a third. Three and a third stars. Uh, as you know, I'm going to get the Continental Pro license in, I believe, one or two months now, because it takes a year to do the Continental qualifications. Once I get that, that's the highest uh, uh, coaching qualification I can have. I'd imagine when I get that, my reputation will jump up to three and two thirds, or four stars in total. So my reputation is slowly increasing. There is still interest from Liverpool. But I'm still not the favourite to take over of any of the clubs that are looking for new managers right now. And as you can see, my characteristics are very good, apart from the media handling, which is always going to be poor. And um, my attributes are going to increase as soon as I get that Continental Pro. But I just, I really don't know what to do, man. I, I really, really don't know what to do. Because this is a really, really fun and interesting young Norwich City team. After selling the Stars this season, in the summer losing Ize and Benkovic to Fulham and Everton, then in January, of course, we sold Lewis, we sold uh, Buendia, and we sold Berger as well. We've we've gotten rid of the, uh, the the big boys here, and now we've got some youngsters that are coming through that are really, really exciting. Zangrandi, the goalkeeper, had a very fine end to the season with five clean sheets in six. Looks set to take over as our number one permanently next season. Uh, obviously, Stephen O'Connor, the big tall Irish slash German 19-year-old midfielder who I really do like. Provenzano, the young Italian, of course, who we really like due to those mental stats. Um, you know, and quite a few others as well. Abby, who ended up being our top scorer this year, although he only scored 11 goals, which is really embarrassing, but still, very good young prospect. And some other names as well, such as Santa Bria, who you would say is uh, our best of the lot in terms of uh, young players here. I, I really don't know what to do. You know, I really, really like this team. It's very, very fun. And I'd like to continue with this side and lead them into Europe. But I honestly, I just don't know. Because what I don't want is a season like the season we had before this one, where we fall out of Europe altogether and it feels like we've wasted a year. If we can keep ourselves in Europe from this point onwards, and I don't mean the Europa Conference League, because that, as far as I'm concerned, is a Mickey Mouse competition, but the Europa League and the Champions League. If we can keep ourselves in the Europa League and the Champions League for good from here on out, then I'm happy to stay and develop the kids. But it's doing that, which is very hard to do in the Premier League in Football Manager. Speaking of our very young tally of players here, as we know, not too many to report in our under-23s and under-18s. The best prospect we've got right now is uh, Johan Hervayu. Johan Hervayu, not too right, sorry I say that, but uh, Johan, regardless, a uh, French fullback here that we signed in January from Lyon. Looks very good. But uh, again, there's just, there's just a lot of young talent here, and it is a fun and interesting team, but it's just we've got to make sure we stay in Europe. If I'm going to stay and sign that new five-year deal... 
then we've got to ensure we keep European football at Carrow Road. So we're going to move on now and take a look at my backroom staff with Norwich City at the moment. As you can see, we are currently missing a coach. That's because during the season, Hernan Crespo, you got to love it, went to Fulham and, uh, and left us midway through the campaign. But I'm going to sign a new coach in the summer. Who I get, though, I'm not entirely sure because as you can see right now, all across the board, we are the best in the division. But you can see our best goalkeeping coaches here. We've got three goalkeeping coaches. Our best attacking coach, best defensive coach, uh, best fitness. Got great great fitness coaches here, uh, mental coaches, technical coaches, and uh, tactical coaches as well. So a great backroom staff, but I've still got one more to add, so I will in the summer. I will be hiring a few more scouts in the summer as well. We've got 10 of 13 at the moment, and I'd like to bump this up right here. And uh, as for our medical team as well, I would like to get another physio at Norwich City. It would be nice if they will grant me one. Yes, lovely stuff. Um, because obviously we don't have the, uh, the best in terms of physiotherapy, fourth in the division. And uh, yeah, I've seen this season, we had quite a few injuries to deal with as well. So yeah, the coaching team's looking good. Uh, under 23 staff members, I would like one more coach there in the under 23s. And as for the under 18s as well, as you know, we're lacking one coach right now, but one of them is indeed, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, Gelson Fernand, uh, studying for the National A. Going to take a while before he gets Continental Pro, but I might actually bump him up to under-23s because his stats are quite poor, and I always find under-18s coaches are more important than under-23s. Moving higher up at the club, as you can see, my manager performance is a B-. minus. I don't think I've ever been better than B+. Plus. Or maybe A minus actually back in the championship. I can't remember now. But uh, I've never managed to get an A star. That must be an amazing feeling. But you can see right now we are improving the training facilities. That will be completed in December. I actually requested that midway through the season. And then it confirmed it at the end of the campaign as well. Um, and again you can see the five year plan is there for you on the left hand side as well. So the board are happy, the fans are reasonably happy with the transfers as well. Well, they're satisfied. <laughs> uh, everyone's a critic. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the backroom staff and the club vision is looking good. As for the finances at the club though, you would have seen in the season finale, I'm, I'm very surprised at how small our transfer budget is for the new season after raising a quarter of a billion pounds in player sales last season. Yes, I know we spent a lot of money as well in, uh, in beginning the rebuild period. I mean, our bank balance has shot up to £112 million, or just shy of that right now, yet the board have only given me £36.3 million, which is just really, really low. I think if I am going to stay, I'm going to say to the board, listen, bump that up. I want at least 60 to 70 million pounds to be working with because that, that's the lowest budget we've had since season two. Our wage bill is not even at the highest it's been in the save either. We had a higher wage bill last season. That was when we still had the likes of Benkovic and Berger and Buendia here and so on and so forth. So I, I don't, I, I literally can't wrap my head around that poor transfer budget. It's really, really poor. But as for the club info section, as you can see here uh, in the general tab, I'm still in the favoured personnel. James Madison has just joined the favoured personnel as well. But I'm still waiting for Aaron's or Godfrey to jump on there. I'm really surprised by that. Uh, Brewster and Buendia are still there, as is Tom Tribal. But uh, yeah, I don't know why Aaron's and Godfrey still haven't gone there yet. And as for the club facilities as well, we haven't improved our stadium capacity since we joined the club. And there's no reason to because we still can't sell out at the moment. But uh, with excellent training facilities, that will become state-of-the-art after they're completed in December. And as for the youth facilities, they took a downgrade during the season, as did our youth level i'll probably look to increase that in the summer but as you guys know i never get the uh, the luck with uh, youth intake so it's it's not really something i'm too concerned about so moving on and i'm going to show you what went on around the world in the major european leagues and some others as well as you know the FA cup this season was won by manchester united whereas arsenal won the carabao cup and in the premier league after a fantastic run towards the end of the season despite losing on the final day we did finish in sixth place i believe that is our second highest finish uh since we joined norwich um was that two years ago we finished in seventh oh there we go three years ago finished in fifth place so um that was our debut year in the premier league as well 75 points that never happened I'm, I'm telling you this is just a hallucination that never ever happened i'm telling you but uh, sixth place second highest finish in the series so far and um yeah we really pulled it around towards the end of the campaign although i will say this so many teams this season really underperformed it seemed like there was a real lack of goals getting scored this season we scored 56 and picked up towards the end of the campaign but really I mean, there should have been more goals flying in. La Liga this season was finally won by Real Madrid. That's right, Barcelona's dominance is over as they end the streak of trophies won by the Catalan club. So fair play, Real Madrid. 
The Serie A this year was won by Roma, beating Inter Milan on the head-to-head -head ruling. And interestingly enough, the two teams that turned me up in the summer both finished outside the Champions League. Uh, Napoli ended up sacking their manager midway through the season and opted to go for Mancini, who finished with them in fifth place. And as for Juventus, who hired Thomas Tuchel, he's still there, but they only finished in sixth place. I don't think they're going to sack him in the summer because if you remember, I talked about this, Juventus's plan was just to finish in a European place. They're, they're not trying to win the title in the post-Ronaldo era, not yet anyway. So I think Tuchel will still be staying there, which is kind of annoying because if I was to leave, I'd love to go and manage Juve with so much money and little ambition. But uh, there you go. The Bundesliga this year was won by Bayern Munich once again, though. Nobody can stop them. They did an undefeated this season, 29 wins in 34 games, finishing a whopping 25 points clear of Borussia Dortmund. Oh my word. They've won it 13 times in a row. I'll tell you this right now. I I, I would love to be the one to, to take out Bayern Munich. But um, maybe I should win something first before thinking about dethroning Bayern. And as for Ligue 1, this is my final league loaded. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain's dominance is over. Marseille were crowned champions this year after, I believe, eight straight titles for PSG. Uh, the side from the south of France won it by six points this year to pick up their first title in... Wow, God knows how long. 26 years? Fair play. Sorry, not 26. Uh, 16 years, my bad. But um, as for the Portuguese league, Benfica were crowned champions once again, pipping Porto to the title for a second straight year. The Russian Premier League was won for the first straight season by Zenit St. Petersburg. PSV stopped Ajax from making it seven in a row by winning the championship there in the Netherlands. Galatasaray winning the title in Turkey this year. And the Austrian Premier League was won by Red Bull Salzburg for a fifth straight season. We'll do a few more whilst we're still here. And uh, the Scottish Premier League once again won by Celtic. I've said this before, I've never seen anyone other than Celtic and Rangers win it. And it's pretty much, nine times out of ten, always Celtic as well. Nobody can stop the lads from Parkhead. The Swiss Super League was won by Basel. That's because young boys lost Gelson Fernandez. The Ukrainian League was won for the fourth straight season by Shakhtar Donetsk. And PAOK are more than OK because they just won the Super League in Greece. Let's do a couple more whilst I'm still here. Uh, the Belgian Pro League was won by Anderlet this season. And as for the Danish top tier, FC Copenhagen uh, won it this season for the third straight time. And uh, we'll end on the championship because, of course, we know we'll be taking on Burnley next season because they beat Swansea in the playoff final. And also Wolves, who are crowned champions, and Aston Villa as well. Sorry, did I say Burns uh, Burnley? It was Barnsley. Oh, I thought it was Burnley at first. Barnsley uh, heading to the top tier. Wow, Barnsley, Aston Villa, and uh, Wolves heading to the Premier League for next year. Wow, they, uh, they have certainly pulled off something special there. They've, uh, they've got Tanganga, uh, once with Spurs, of course, at centre-back. Um, but looking at their team, I, I can't see how they stay up next season unless they spend some money. Oh, my word! No! They've got Moses! Moses Odger has guided Barnsley to promotion at Oakwell. Fans of my FIFA 17 St. Pauli career mode will tell you all about Mr. Freelungs. Oh, that's brilliant! Fair play, Moses. I ain't seen him in years. It's always fun when a former career mode player or football manager player you've had, you've got a certain attachment to, does something nice for an AI club. As for the Champions League this year, as you can see, uh, Real Madrid beat Barcelona in an El Clasico final to capture their first... Oh, dear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in the save so far. It's been a different winner, I believe, every single season. Apart from Liverpool. They're the only team that's... Uh, oh, no, I'm Bayern Munich as well. <laughs> Never mind, scratch that. As we know, Manchester City were crowned champions of the Europa League for the second time in the save by beating Inter Milan this year. And in the Europa Conference League, Hertha Berlin beat the Swiss side Young Boys in the final. As for international competitions, right now you've got the Nations League this year. Uh, France are looking to free-peat. They've got Holland in the semis, whereas Germany face Italy. As we know, France are one of the strongest nations in world football right now. They won the European Championships last season by beating Italy in the final. And they're also the back-to-back -back winners of the World Cup as well. Won it in 2018 in Russia, as we know, and also won it in Qatar three years ago too. And I'll also show you the African Cup of Nations, where Cooley Bali uh, helped Senegal win the African Cup of Nations this season. And as for the Copper America, uh, that was won by Brazil last year. Uh, they've now won it for three straight competitions.
and also a couple of major competitions elsewhere in world football. Uh, last year, Santos won the Copa Libertadores. And as for the Orange CAF Champions League, which I believe is Africa's premier continental competition, I think, um, Pyramids uh, won it this year by beating Tunis on penalties. I think that's the Champions League one. Oh, it says there, so I'm going to assume it is. You know, I must say my knowledge of African football is not very good, so I apologise if I got that one wrong. But um, anyway, next up, I'm going to show you some of the very best players in the world before we end today's episode off, because I can't think of anything else I wanted to show you. And we will start with Eda Militao, who is the highest value player in world football right now, the Brazilian uh, defender who's got some extraordinary stats. Absolutely amazing. Is he just joined Bayern Munich? He has indeed for £141 million. Pounds. That's why his valuation is so high right now. But either way, world class, 300 grand a week, superb player. Mbappe, I believe, is the highest paid footballer on the planet right now. He's earning £625,000 a week at Barcelona right now. Extraordinary stats. Lautaro Martinez is also at Bayern Munich. This explains exactly why they are so dominant in German football right now. Next up, Bernardo Silva of Barcelona on £275,000 a week. Vignato joined Bayern Munich three years ago and has been absolutely sensational. Frankie de Jong moved on from Barcelona to Paris Saint-Germain three years ago. And his mental stats, oh man, what I do to have this guy in my Norwich team. Kai Havertz, as we know, is at Manchester United, moved on from Barcelona a couple of years ago, and has got some world-class stats, of course. Troy Parrott, the football manager, always goes ballistic, and this save has been no different. Two years ago, uh, joined Manchester City, and as you can see, 15 goals in 38 this year. I think he was one of the top scorers in the Premier League as well, because nobody really stood out this year in front of goal, but uh, either way, fantastic stats, absolutely brilliant striker. And Marcus Rashford is still at Old Trafford as well, has developed into an elite winger slash striker with some fantastic physicals, great mentals, and superb technicals as well. Let's do a few more whilst I'm here as well. Uh, Mohamed Aitaran, not sure how you pronounce that, uh, Dutch midfielder, uh, attacking midfielder here, wants to leave the club and play in the Champions League. Interesting stuff. Who wants him? Real Madrid. I don't think we'll that muscle them <laughs> for his signature. Looks absolutely fantastic though. Like many people predict in real life, Leroy Sane has gone back to Germany to join Bayern Munich. Spent the past five years at the Allianz earning 300 grand a week with some extraordinary stats. I'm just looking down the list here and looking for the best new gen slash regen player in world football right now. There's Sander Berger. But uh, I'm, I'm not finding anyone that's, uh, that's not a real player on this list at the moment. Who is the best player? Oh, there's one. Uh, Gober for Manchester City. Now, I believe, yeah, he went from Barcelona to Man City, but he's not. He's not. He's valued at 68 mil, but because he just joined for an inflated fee, that's not his true valuation, 68 mil. He's worth less than that. Uh, Esbozito, that's not a real player. Uh, sorry, that's not a fake player. Um, I don't, wow, there, there seems to be a real lack of amazing wonder kids in world football at the moment. Could possibly say this one's the best. The Masaru, actually come to think about it, I, I probably would say he's the best. 21 years old, 19 determination, physically absolutely rapid and, uh, and great technically too. 18 goals in 28 games. Yeah, he, he moved on for 60 mil from Ajax and he's been great in Spain. He's probably, he's probably the best new gen slash regen in world football right now. See what I mean though, guys? There are some decent ones around, but there's there's a lack of them. There is a lack of wonder kids in this save. I'd like to think we've got a couple of great ones. I'd still like to believe that Vasilic could become one. Come on, Vukasin. But um, yeah, there, there definitely is a lack of wonder kids in this save. I can't put my finger on why that is, but they're just not as common as they used to be in previous FMs. And you know, I honestly can't think of anything else I want to show you before we end today's episode there. So I think we probably will leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching the Index Special, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did, then please do drop a like. The players work hard for each other. Of course they bloody do. This is a determined group of players. Of course they bloody are. But um, a high level of teamwork is often on display. Of course it bloody is. But uh, yeah, I can't think of anything else I want to show you. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching the Index Special. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. I love making these videos. They're really, really fun just to sit down, be chill, and um, yeah, show you what's going on under the hood and around the world as well. 
But um, whether we stay or not, I don't know. I think I probably will sign this contract. So I could still leave regardless. I could, I could sign the thing and then piss off like Fabian Delph many years ago, I suppose. But um, I think I probably will stay, to be honest. Because again, like I said before, there are jobs that are currently available. But I am not the favourite to take over any of them. Atletico Madrid, Athletic Bilbao, PSG and Liverpool. All very intriguing job offers. But I don't think any of these clubs will take a punt on me. Due to the fact I'm still technically not qualified as Continental Pro. And um, the other managers have just got far more pedigree than me as well. So I'd imagine I'll probably be staying. That might change. I'm not going to say for definite because it still might change. If a job interview comes in for me, I will at least attend it. But I would, I would probably say... Based on this young group of players and my lack of reputation, I'll probably be leading them, the kids that is, into the Europa League next season. It might change, it might not. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But that was this episode though guys, so a big fan of you for watching, really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy the special in-depth look at the save, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for the next episode. A brand new season, a transfer special, where we might be taking the kids into the Europa League, or we might be at another club. I'm not entirely sure, I guess you just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the season opener of Season 7 very soon.